let's just let everyone hop on. And make sure comments are working. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Alright, sorry I'm a little bit behind, guys. <laughs> As per usual. Uh, well, I hope you guys had a great uh, Thanksgiving long weekend. And today we're going to be playing with the fluffy stuff. So I picked up these really cute tags and stamps by Avriel. Let me just grab them so you guys can see. So we have the holiday circle tags. And then we've got, oh, where's my other package? That's the problem, I move all the packages. There we go. I need some background. And then these are the really cute nutcrackers. And what's really cool is with this um, circle tags, there's actually a bunch in the line which are really neat. There's sort of like an all occasion one. Um, there's also a Christmas one which I have also. Um, so think this with different sentiments like hello, thank you, that's the other step too. So I thought this would be kind of fun to play with to show you what you can do um, in addition to what Sherry showed you last week, which was on her cards by adding dimension. But also you can do it with glitter and inking it once it's dry. I'm gonna show you inking pre-drying so you guys can see that as well um, to make some really cute Christmas trees. And I've got comments on, so if you guys do have any questions, um, tag me or put them in and I'll read them. So if sometimes I do pause, you guys know that, just so I can make sure I'm reading them. Um, the circle tags also has this really cute die that you can um, get, and sure, you'll have to correct me to make sure that, um, that we have, I can't remember if we have any of these ones in stock. But this goes in conjunction with both of these, or you can use just circle dies you have at home if you want. I just find it easier because then I can keep them all together and just use them together. Plus it has this really cute to and fro and the little um, like the pop tabs that you can put on them. Which is really cool. Okay, so let's get showing you what you can do. Right. So I somewhat prepared and I cut out one nutcracker so far. <laughs> I know I laugh, it's not really funny, but it's just the way my day's going. Oh, Darlene even says dies are in stock. She puts them out today. So you can pick them up, they are really super cute. Um, okay, I'm gonna really quickly color him up. I'm not gonna do anything too fancy. So this is using sort of any of your alcohol markers that you have. Oh, oh I almost oh, saved by the bell. For all of you who haven't worked with alcohol markers before, I almost splotched on my paper. Basically what happens is the pressure in the barrel of the marker isn't regulated and it almost just went poof all over my my image. Okay, so I'm just gonna say we're gonna do this one really quick. So let's do some reds and some greens. So I have a good navy. Yes, I do. Okay. So. I'm going to color his hat with the navy that I've picked. Actually, 
And for any of those of you who haven't crafted with me before, I do tend to talk to myself a lot. Shaky hands today. Alright. Oh, I guess I forgot another piece of this. The green is YG95. The navy, yeah, I have to admit, it's one of my favorites. It's in the B lines if you're the Copic person. Okay. I'll have to figure out what it will be that. Um, but, okay, fluffy stuff. So... I would do the fluffy stuff first and then I want to adhere it onto here and that will be my tag for Christmas present. Um, you could also make a swing tag. So basically you just cut out two of the same and you just pop a little um, brad in here and then you can swing it out and then put your little saying and stuff on here as well, which I thought was really cool. You can pop this up, um, but the main thing we're gonna do is basically just add a little dimension so what's nice about doing this, obviously the fluffy stuff, is that, um, and do I have a, I usually have a pen around with me. I'll have to find it. And this just allows you to add dimension, like Sherry mentioned when she did hers. Just add that little extra oomph to make it pop. And I'm trying to keep it as much in the lines as I can. Now, Sherry also showed you using this and then adding glitter once it's wet, once it's still wet, and then heating it. And then it retains the glitter, which is nice because no one likes glitter everywhere. I'm sure every one of you has stories to tell of where they've where you found the glitter. Like we all do. I cannot quite sure where my pin is, but we're going to use the tips of the scissors. This should work. So what I'm doing is I'm just spreading it out because I don't want like a huge amount on this. I just want enough that it's going to stick up because I mean, you know, little kids, they're going to be all over this with their fingers and I don't want it rubbing off too much. Not that it does, but you still, with kids nowadays, you never know. I'm just checking. Oh, I really need my pen. Hold on one second, guys. Okay. This will make it so much easier. Oh, yeah. See, I missed another part of the space. Oh. Not the first time, won't be the last time.
This is what takes the longest, guys. Sorry. This guy was alive. He certainly would probably get motion sickness with the amount that I turned them. I'm far worse with the girls in my coloring classes. Like the color with me. I swear to goodness, they get <laughs> more than the 360 view of the image that we're coloring. Okay, so once you're done, you're going to heat it. And the way I heat it is, and forgive me because it's probably going to get loud, is I just use my regular heat gun. One setting, Sherry's uh, really nicely has two settings. She's all fancy. I'm not. I have one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to let that heat up for a minute and I'm going to grab my trusty tweezers. I do have craft ones, but I put them away. Now, because this gets hot, I like to hold it with a pair of tweezers. And you'll just, when it starts, it'll sort of get matte, and then all of a sudden, it'll pop. Now, there's where it started to pop. My feet are over here. Let me see if I can get some good light on that. Ooh, there we go. How's that? Okay, so here you will see that it started to pop in this area and it's just starting to get to that point right there where it's gone from very very juicy to sort of a matte finish almost like it's slightly dried on top and then if we continue oh god whoo it's burny smell. Hopefully you guys can see it. And it all start popping. Here we go. Okay. My fingers are burning. <laughs> okay. So there we go. There's our little. Sorry, I just had to kind of flatten them a bit, bit there. All right, so that is our nutcracker so far with just the plain fluffy stuff. So I'm just gonna color this cheek here. Now you can do, I mentioned a swing, a swing tag. You can do a swing tag, oh my God. It's a tongue twister for me tonight apparently, it's a swing tag. So there's two ways you can do the swing tag, you can punch a little hole, put a broad through here, and swing it like that. Or you can just punch a little hole, put some twine through it, and then you've sort of got the double layer. You can also do them different colors. Um, if you want, you can even just glue them together and have the really pretty same side. And then he'll get popped on there. And then you just put the information on the back for the present. Really cute and an easy way to do a very cute tag. The other thing I wanted to show you is, and I'm just gonna have to ooh, pull my mat off because this gets wet. Okay, so what you're going to do when you're coloring the fluffy stuff you can use a couple of different products. You can use powders. Um, you can use um, ink refills. I have some random green that I had, like I don't need. Yeah. So we're gonna use green, and we're gonna do a little Christmas tree. Okay. So you can do this with any color. So if you wanted to do gray hair, gray fuzz, you could on something. You're literally just gonna put a little bit, depending on the size of your project. Okay, and you're gonna add your, oh, sorry guys, I haven't looked at the comments. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, I know. I'm terrible with scissors. Okay, so I basically just added one dot. Now, I would normally... Oh, I do have it. So one dot of color. Now depending on how dark you want it, I mean, you're going to have to be careful because it will change the consistency. Okay. So what I wanted to do on one of these. This one had some really cute Christmas trees. Now you could also use this for grass too. So if you've colored it green, you could do like a, a base. So I'm just gonna grab my memento. I'm gonna do my cute little cutout here. I'm gonna fancy it up. It's a really We wanted to add some Christmas trees. For example, I go, oh, I don't like the green um, that's on the background. I want to kind of play it up. You can mix this here and you can add it to your Christmas tree. Now, again, this is when having the pin really does come in handy. This, to be honest, is too small for a spatula. Okay. Now, see, we also wanted to add a little bit of dimension to this tree. Now what you'll see I'm doing is I'm covering my pin and I'm sort of dragging it outwards. So it's not fully solid. And by doing it this way, you're giving it a bit more of a different dimension, right? Ooh. Now I'm throwing things at me. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna heat this one up. So I'm gonna lift it up so you guys can see what I've done so far. So one Christmas tree is fully in, and the other one sort of has like this like line technique. Yes, you could use the paintbrush as well. Um, it would have to be fine and you'd have to clean that paintbrush really well with um, soap and water after the bath. Um, I really like the two different looks it gives you. So you have the two Christmas trees. Sorry, I had to do that off camera because it got really hot. So let me just make sure we get, ooh. Oh, sorry, it, the burning smell is crazy. Um, so you have the tree on the right here, which is just solidly painted. And then you have this one here on the left, where I use the pin to give it a bit more dimension. 
You can use the paintbrush too, although um, I would have a, if you want to try the same technique, have a pin with you because it will allow you to put sort of bigger grooves within what you've painted. So it gives you a, di a different way of using the product, which is nice. Okay. So. Okay. Sorry. Okay. The other thing. You could also use this on hollies, for example, on these cute little snowmen. You could kind of do this. You could also do it with the red dots. Even his carrot nose would look really cool with the orange. Um, again, you can use a paintbrush, and, but to put some grooves in it, I would use a pin or something thicker. Um, even one of those um, paper piercers. I think like the Tim Holtz pokey stick. Um, and then you could put some grooves in it to make the lines on the carrots, which would look really neat. Okay, I'm just going to wipe this up. Sorry, guys. Alright, okay. So, does anybody have any questions um, about how I did that? Does anyone want to see me do it again so you guys can see? Otherwise, we'll talk about adding it to a project on like a scrapbook layout. You could also use it in your traveler's notebooks too. Um, what would be really neat to do um, with the, and what I plan to do with the, these guys here, the nutcrackers is add them to planning pages or um, a scrapbook page, sort of at the bottom underneath my picture. Um, and then do sort of like a, I guess a collage of different pictures because we have a few different cute nutcrackers at home, which I thought would be really neat. It's also good on cards too. Um, I really do like the glitter technique um, and there's so many different things you can do it. And what's, again, what's nice is you don't have to buy six different colors. You can color them yourselves. Um, I believe, um, I haven't tried it with the Tim Holtz ink refills. I would assume with the Distress Ink it would work fine. I don't know about the Distress Oxides and whether that would work. Um, but if anyone does try it, please let me know because that would be really cool. Um, because I find those colors are a lot more pastel-y which is nice. Margaret, the wow powder that you're mentioning, is that like a mica powder or um, what kind of a powder is it? If it's an embossing powder, it probably wouldn't. Although, Actually, it might work. Do I have any embossing powder here? I was hoping I had my glow in the dark one here. Embossing. You know what? Why don't we try it? Yes, um, you can do the Nutcracker's beard um, with the grooves too. I can show that. Just look, hold on one second. I printed a bunch, or should it be printed? I stamped a bunch of these to try. So let's do that. And let's do Santa. Okay, so I'm going to take the fluffy stuff. Oh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love the lid and the fact that you never really use it. One side of Santa, normal. And one side with a bit of embossing powder. 
I would assume it would harden like Sherry said, but you know what? It never hurts to experiment, especially when I actually had some here, so it actually worked out well. Okay, so I'm just spreading it out a little bit. I don't like it too clumpy. I don't like it too thick in all the areas. Oh, <laughs> yep, Washi is my friend. All right, so we're gonna try one side with a little bit of the embossing powder. And do I have, let me make a little benefits of working at home. Post-it notes and 3M flags. Okay. All right, so we have one side with the embossing powder, one side plain. Okay, so I'm gonna lift that up so you guys can see that. So this side here, we have the embossing powder on it. You'll see it's sort of, I don't know if you guys can see that. Oh, sorry about the light does not like me today. Um, it's sort of grainy. And then the other side's just regular, shiny. Okay, I'm gonna grab my heat gun. Oh okay, so funny enough, um, the side with the embossing powder is about twice as high as the one without the embossing powder. Now, you guys probably won't be able to see it as well, um, but it definitely, funny enough, has some more height to it, which is weird because I wouldn't think that it does. Let me see if I can get that on its side so you guys can see. I don't know. I'm watching the video as I'm trying to do it, so forgive me. I don't know if you guys, hopefully you guys can see it's slightly thicker. So who would have thought <laughs> embossing powder would do that? So thank you for suggesting that. That's great. Um, yep, it is a little bit harder. Gosh, see, I never would have even thought of that. That's crazy. But awesome so that would be really cool so that will allow you to change it up like with gold and silver um we have this really cool glow in the dark which would be really cool for um clouds um because i've used this on clouds to accent clouds to make them puffy which is really cool but i wanted to try doing the lines on this guy here so you guys can get It's amazing how someone can think of something so neat that changes the complete composition basically of it and how it works. I know I was always a proponent for, I don't know if that's the right word, but I always said you could, you know, the nice thing about it is you could color it, um, but you could never color it and get those nice golds and, and silvers and stuff. So that's a great alternative using the embossing powders. But just be aware, it does puff up really, <laughs> really a lot more than you would have anticipated. Okay. Okay, so basically at this point, I'm just sort of spacing her out a little. Okay, 
So I'm just adding some little lines. I think I put just a little too much on there. As I'm doing the lines, it is taking a little bit off. So just make sure when you do do it, that you don't heat your hand or wherever you put the excess. Okay, there we go. Because I have done that and it's not so much fun. Alright, so I've just added some sort of lines to give it a bit of definition. Okay, then we're going to heat that up. kind of go with the flow of what I've done. I think it's better when you use it with the pin rather than putting it on first. So I'm going to show you the other side. So we're going to put some fluff stuff here. Okay, now I'm going to use the thicker side of my pin here. Okay, that will be the bottom. So I just put a tiny little bit on there. I'm gonna try it. Yeah, see, I like that a little bit better. So that keeps it a little bit more contained and also has more of a a less um, warty look. <laughs> um, so a little different rather having it on and doing the lines versus having it on like a surface um, and then sort of drawing it on. So I find you have a bit more control doing it this way versus this way because you don't know which way it's going to pop. Doing it that way also helps um, with very small areas. So if you're just doing a little snow here and there, you don't want to you know, do the um, technique that um, Sherry showed you last week. Um, this is also an alternative, especially if it's very, very small that you're doing it. Yeah, <laughs> and my pin is a thick pin. <laughs> um, but anything with like a small, like one of those poker tools will work too. Um, if you have the old school, oh, what is it, Sizzix or something, the stick them with the one side and the poker with the other side, that will work as well. Does anybody have any questions about how I used it um, or about the product itself? Like, honestly, when this month is over, you guys will have so many more different uses for this one product, which will be great. Um, and you'll see it used on different um, projects and such like that. 
I am going to finish these up and then post them in the group um, by the end of the week, just because this week's busy for work. Um, so I will post a couple of different things using the fluffy stuff for you guys to see. Okay. Um, next week, I believe, is Darlene. Darlene, you might have to correct me on that because I know Sherry and Chris switched. Um, so that threw me off last week. Um, but, uh, yeah, I hope you guys had fun and I hope this was a great, um, sort of preview of another way to use a product, um, that you wouldn't necessarily think could be used for other, um, oh, actually I thought of a really good thing too. Um, if you have like yellow or orange and you're doing the center of a flower and you want to pop it up, this would look really cool for the center of a flower. Just saying. Chris is next week, thank you, and then Darlene. Um, so they will have um, different techniques on how to use the same product. So again, if you really like this, let us know because um, we can do them again um, another month and then you guys will see us how each one of us interprets the product, which is really good, okay? Well, I hope you guys had fun. Um, I will be signing off this week, but I will be posting in the group um, the different projects I made so you guys will be able to see them, okay? See you guys next month. Bye.